Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we're very used to counting in decimal. We have 10 fingers, so therefore zero through to nine gives us 10 different digits. Actually though, when you're doing computer programming or even when you're doing web development, sometimes it's useful to use hexadecimal. So if you wanna find out about hexadecimal and how to use it, please, let me explain. Okay, so let's just jump straight into it. As I said in the introduction, we use base 10 decimal normally, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 symbols like the 10 digits on our fingers. And so if, for example, if you have the number 23, that means two lots of 10, that's what the two there means, and the three means three lots of one, and so you get 23, 20 plus three. 147 is one lo uh, lot of 100, four lots of 10, and seven lots of one, 147 and you all know this from elementary school and every time you add a digit you go up by a power of 10 and we call this base 10. Now hexadecimal is base 16 so there are 16 symbols not 10 so you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as we would expect but then for the extra 6 we've got A, B, C, D, E and F so 0 through to F and so if you have 0x. Now 0x is the normal way to denote that you're talking in hexadecimal rather than in decimal because some of the numbers would look like uh, decimal numbers but in fact they are hexadecimal numbers. So 0x8 is 8, 0x9 is 9 in decimal but 0xa in hexadecimal is 10 in decimal because now rather than going 9, 1, 0, 9, 10 you go 9, a, because it's the next digit here, 9 and then 10. Okay, so uh, 8, 9, 10, and then of course that means this is 11, 12, 13, 14, and F means 15, and this is what we call base 16. So we'll carry on here as I just did. B, X, 0, X, B is 11, 0, X, F is 15, and so 0, X, 1, 0, not 0, X, 10, because this is, des this is uh, hexadecimal, 0, X, 1, 0 is 16 in decimal, 0x11 is 17 in decimal, 0x12 is 18 in decimal, and so on. And you can just keep on going up and up and up. So 0x63 is 99 uh, in decimal, and 0x64 is 100 in decimal. Now here's the key point here. Decimal is now using three digits, whereas hex is only using two. And this is why hexadecimal starts to be very useful because here, when we got to 100, I'm still actually in the two digit range. And we'll see this keeps going up even higher. In fact, eight bits in a byte gives you a maximum of 255. So in one byte, you can store between zero and 255, which means in hex, zero X F E is 254. And here we go, 0xff is 255. So two digits, 0xff, is the same as one full byte. So now you can represent what you find in a byte just using two fixed digits of which ff is the maximum number. And that continues on also to 16 bit, uh, bits. So 16 bits is two bytes. The maximum is 65535. So any number between 0 and 65535 can be stored in 16 bits, which is two bytes. So 0xffe is 65534 in decimal. And then 0x FFFF is 65535, so four digits now to store two bytes. So actually you can see that is one byte, and that the other bar is the other byte, which is two byte 16 bits. And while this is interesting for HTML colors is because HTML colors are defined in red, green, blue. So the color orange is 255 full red, uh, green 128, so half level of green, and no blue. So that's three bytes, one byte per color channel. So a byte holds between zero and 255, as we said a moment ago. So full red is 255, half, half green is 128, and zero blue. So 255, 1280 is orange. Now that's workable, but in hex, it looks much so much nicer. So here is what the code would look like in uh, HTML and CSS, uh, and so on. So FF, that's full. Z eight zero half green and no blue and in fact you can look here at the basic colors that are available uh, in html css uh, black white red and you can see red is full full red 
no green, no blue, and then you can go down through all the different colors. Yellow here is uh, full red, full green, no blue, you know, and then we can go down and look at all the different purple here is uh, half, half red, no green, half blue, and there are all the colors. And here are the equivalents of them also in uh, decimal. So that's where these numbers come from when you see them in HTML5 and in uh, style scripts. Uh, that's because it is the hexadecimal equivalent of those three bytes. Now, of course, the question is how do you convert from decimal to hex and from hex to decimal? So basically, it's like this. You divide the decimal number by 16 and you write down the remainder in hex. So what do I mean by that? If we take the decimal number 121 and we divide that by 16, well, 16 goes in seven times. We're not going to deal with fractions or with floating point numbers, real numbers. We're going to deal with a remainder of nine. So seven lots of 16 is a whole number, but then there's a remainder of nine that doesn't fit into a whole 16. So you write down that nine there in hexadecimal. In this case, it's also uh, the digit nine. Now, seven can't be divided by 16 again. So now you write down the digit seven and that's it. So 121 in hex is 0x79, just exactly as we have there. So let's do that with a more complicated one, 3002. You divide that by 16. Well, that gives you 187 lots of 16 in 3002 with a remainder of 10 in decimal. And of course, 10 in decimal is A in hexadecimal. So we write down the A. Then we get the 187, which we've got from here, those two that carries on. That can now also be divided by 16. Okay, and that gives you 11. Okay, 11 lots of 16 in 187, but with a remainder of 11. OK, so that means we put down B because 11 is B in hexadecimal. Now, 11 can't be divided by 16 any further. Obviously, it's smaller than 16. So we write down another B. So 3002 in hexadecimal is B, B, A. As simple as that. And this process can be applied to any length of decimal number that you want to. And how do you convert back from hexadecimal into decimal? Well, here's our number 0x79 that we had. Well, basically, it's 7 times 16, because this here is like the, uh, the 16s column. It's the 10s column in decimal. Now, it's 16 columns in hexadecimal, and then 9 here. So 7 times 16 is 112, plus 9 is 121. Now, technically, it's actually 7 times 16 to the power of 1, plus 9 times 16 to the power of 0. Now, 16 to the power of 0 is 1, and uh, 16 to the power of 1 is 16. So it becomes 7 times 16 plus 9. Now, if we do that with a more complicated example, BBA like we had, here I've written down the side just so you have a quick reference for 16 to the power of 2, 16 to the power of 3, 16 to the power of 4, and so on. So it becomes 11, that's B, times 16 to the power of 2, plus 11 times 16 to the power of 1, plus 10, that's the A, times 16 to the power of 0, which we know is just 1, so it becomes 10. So that means 11 times 256 plus 11 times 16 plus 10. So that's 2,816 plus 176 plus 10, which is 3,002, the number that we had a moment ago. And one more uh, uh, trick here. If you see here now, I've got 2BBA, hexadecimal, 2BBA. So it's 2 times 16 to the power of 3 plus 11 times 16 to the power of 2 plus 11 times 16 to the power of 1 plus 10 times 16 to the power of 0, which of course is 1. But here's a trick. We already know that BBA is 3002 because we did that on the previous slide. BBA is 3002. So now what we know is it's actually it's 2 times 4096, which is 6 to the power of 16 to the power of 3, plus 3002. You don't need to work all this lot out again. We already know what that is. So we add the two together and you get 11,194. Please do go ahead and check my calculations. Okay, so there you have it. So the next time you see uh, 0XFF, you'll know what it means and you won't be frightened away. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon and well, um, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.